and I read. People can live a hundred years. I've this. never seen anyone in simultaneous meets in my entire life. But you can now. You can. Hey guys, it's Vero. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. So this is going to be the last video of my Gilmore Girls series. I really wanted to tackle all of the characters and I'll eventually open up the series again in the future. But yeah, this is the last Gilmore Girls video for the year. So in honor of that, I wanted to do something creative and make this video like a controversial but not so controversial video. Um, something that has been heavily debated on TikTok and the Gilmore Girls fandom and that is who is the best boyfriend? <laughs> if you finished the original Gilmore Girls series, Rory ended up with none of the three main hotties that constitutes to Rory Gilmore's love interest, which is actually a good thing for our Rory because the possibilities were so wide for her and committing to a relationship would cause a serious hindrance, especially she aspires to travel the world and see places and all of that stuff. But when the year in the life was released, we were once again introduced to these three main hotties and sparked the heavy debate on who is the most compatible for our main character. So the purpose of this video is to put that long-term debate to rest. So who are the candidates? First up is none other than Rory's first love, Lorelai's definition of a perfect first boyfriend, and that is Dean Forrester. So it's plain obvious that a lot of us, including me, don't like Dean at all. He was selfish and at most possessive, but his best characteristics include caring and thoughtfulness, which are good signs, so we're not going to disregard Dean just yet. The second candidate is Jess Mariano, also Luke's nephew, our bad boy boyfriend. He is known in the town as a troubled kid who possess incredible intelligence, quick wit, and an interest for English and literature. I'll try not to be a little too biased with this one, but obviously I love Jess. If you were to ask me, Jess would be the perfect match, but I won't let my favoritism be the defining factor of Rory's compatible boyfriend. So who moves to our last candidate, and that is Logan Huntsberger, aka what people call to be Lorelai's Christopher, Rory version. He is a charming fellow alongside with his charming bank account, a rebellious, free-spirited kind of guy who breathes the same air as Rory's grandparents. So now that we met our candidates, let's talk about the boyfriend criteria. In order for this video to not be biased as possible, I want to make a percentage system in order to determine the eligibility. One of the important qualities to look for in a guy is attentiveness. Is our candidate sensitive toward our main character's feelings? Is he able to sympathize, understand, and cater to the needs? Overall, the candidates could get as high as 20%. Next up is maturity. It will focus on how he is able to deal with conflicts or tough situations when dating, and this constitutes to 20%. The third one is loyalty. Loyalty is pretty much self-explanatory, so this goes about also 20%. The fourth one is sense of humor. I know this is completely unnecessary, but I personally feel the sense of humor should be given importance as much as the other areas on this list. So I am applying this qualification for Rory as well. And this is obviously self-explanatory, so this one grants 10%. The last component is compatibility. Like all other relationships, compatibility is the strongest defining factor of the strengths of the relationship. In this area, we unravel the common interests, how they go about compromise and coexisting, and giving emphasis towards connection that is rooted in deep understanding with one another. And this area will make up 30% of our boyfriend criteria. Hey. Ah! Morning. Good book. I don't know yet. Dean was obviously romantic and sweet at first. He was labeled by Lorelai as a perfect first boyfriend. Like, he literally built a car for her so Rory doesn't have to take the bus all the way to Hartford. So that really kickstarts his rating for about 100%. <laughs> He was very gentle and caring and he looks out for Rory and he admires her exclusive passion for books and learning, but he likes to be in the same wavelength as Rory. Like one scene in season 2 when Rory preferred to have some time alone that she often didn't get to have, Dean retorted to stop by at her place and brought some ice cream. While this was obviously a sweet gesture, but it proves to show that Dean lacked total understanding for the needs of space and privacy. And when Rory talks about her dreams of going to Harvard or pursue a higher education, Dean would be dismissive or would even get irritated. Now, I don't want to discredit some of Dean's thoughtful actions. He definitely has his fair share of perfect boyfriend material qualities. Um, but in Dean's case, the cause for concern for the alarming red flags overpowers the good. So Dean's writing for attentiveness out of 20 would be 14. I thought we were going to spend some time together. We are. When? I don't know, tomorrow maybe? 
You were busy today. I told so you. So we made plans for tonight. Yes, but... And now you're blowing me off again. I'm not blowing you off. I was hoping to give Dean a chance to redeem himself, but he proved that he was not far off from the Dean we knew in the earlier seasons. Like for one in the earlier seasons during their three month anniversary when he told Rory he loves her and Rory was hesitant to say I love you back, Dean completely lost it. That was the first crack of the glass, like that was the first major red flag. And when he and Rory would get into fights, it would always be on public display. With him maybe yelling at Rory or break up with her in public, disregarding her desire to handle the issue privately. He was extremely possessive and jealous that even Rory's pursuance towards Harvard or Yale was a problem. It was not a healthy relationship at all. It was severely controlling and Rory would often worry if Dean would get mad. And clearly the boy has major trust and anger issues. So for maturity, he gets 12%. Where does Lindsay think you are? She thinks I'm out. Out where? Doesn't matter. While Dean was loyal in his relationship with Rory, that's not usually the case. This is pretty obvious, but the storyline that made the fans fume with anger was when he cheated on his wife Lindsay with Rory. So I don't want to elaborate more on this one and just ultimately give Dean 13% on this one. Hi, it's me editing Vera. So I realized that 13% is a little bit high, so I'm going to give Dean 5% for loyalty. That's all you want, honey? A head of lettuce and a mouse trap? That should do it. That's a couple of must-need items there. Dean didn't really possess wit and sarcasm when he was dating Rory. Their relationship was more of a protector and caretaker, if that makes sense. Dean got most of Lorelai and Rory's reference jokes, but he doesn't really seem to participate in their little silly moment. He just goes along with it and doesn't seem to find it weird, which is a good sign. So though Dean lacked most of the admired qualities except for being ridiculously handsome, obviously, he deserves a reasonable rating and so... At least in this area, he could redeem himself. So Dean Forrester, you get a 4% for sense of humor. Just standing here. Next to? A car. Your car? No. Finished it yesterday. No, you didn't. Do you want them? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I definitely agree with Lorelai claiming Dean as the perfect first boyfriend. So like, as I said before, he was sweet, gentle, and caring, both in a good way and a bad way. I like Dean when he and Rory first started dating. And imagine having to go through the process of dating Stars, Hollows, Golden Girl while the town watches you. I also appreciated how Lorelai fully trusted Dean and how comfortable she was with Dean. And also, let's appreciate Dean's efforts in their relationship, like the car, the bracelets, and all of that stuff. Rory was very lucky, but when it comes to their relationship, like focusing on Rory's and Dean's alone, there is a clear lack of connection. Like there's an absence of connection, like they didn't really connect it any deeper in emotional level. Their fights seem to indicate the lack of communication, and if there was, they weren't clearly seeing eye to eye. They just couldn't get each other and were never in sync. And not to mention, when Rory and Dean first broke up, Rory used Tristan as some sort of like a rebound. Even though it wasn't intentional, it was evident from the start that Rory's feelings for Dean was not that strong. So for compatibility, and I'm being super generous, a whopping 23%. This is a diner, there's ice cream here. Yes, but we don't have any cones. Cones. I need cones. Well, so if we go get ice cream, In cones. Then you'll be a perfect student for the rest of the night. Jess and Rory started off as friends and seemed to be perfect for each other. He was somehow we can say her soulmate. He also seemed to be the only one who can talk some sense to Rory, like the why did you drop out of Yale scene. But during the relationship, it was the opposite. Suffice to say, there's not a lot of Rory and Jess relationship development because it was merely for a short time. And being friends and lovers are two dynamics that are completely different. But from that timeline, they don't seem to get along at all. There was a lot of miscommunications. And I know that Jess was so troubled and that's why he was acting out, but that's not a reasonable excuse for his horrible treatment towards Rory. It's like a game of cat and mouse in their relationship with Rory being the cat and Jess being the mouse. For Jess, I'm gonna start off strong with the party incident. When he wasn't able to get prom tickets because he failed to attend classes, you know what scene I'm referring to and that was so unforgivable and comes with a continuous streak of unfavorable actions. I'm actually so torn whether I should consider Jess's character development, so I might give him a little boost in the ratings, 
but I'm making Jess during your relationship as the ultimate basis. So for attentiveness, Jess gets 12%. The band's playing a whole other set. They can do it without us. I don't want to leave. Now come on, try to have fun, talk, mingle. Jess was definitely immature during his relationship with Rory. He didn't handle conflicts very well. He either opted to avoid talking about that said conflict or just straight out ghost Rory. So basically, Jess wasn't really ready at all to be in a relationship during this time. Like, Rory was too good for Jess. Jess didn't know how to handle a relationship. He didn't have a good relationship basis on what a healthy relationship looks like. I mean, look at his parents. He was a troubled 17 year old kid who was extremely misunderstood and the town and the people around him were just as cruel as one can get. But uh, here's the thing, Jess's character really grew a lot and I truly feel that if they give the relationship a second shot, it would be different this time. But yeah, he was immature and didn't know how to communicate well and express his feelings. So for maturity, Jess gets 14%. You came here alone to Philadelphia. He was out of town. I don't deserve this, Rory. No, you don't. You don't deserve it. Jess was super duper loyal with Rory, and I know Rory is the love of his life even after all these years. He is definitely still hoping, but I have to consider this his relationship with Shane. I just don't like how he treats Shane and how he was in a relationship with her even though he's aware that he was in love with Rory. And the moment Dean and Rory broke up, he then disposed Shane. Okay, disposed might be a harsh word, but you get what I mean. And that says a lot about his character and perspective amongst women. So for loyalty, Jess gets 17%. Because maybe this whole thing can be solved between me and Dean if we just sat down, had a little heart to heart. He could tell me his issues, I'll tell him mine. Jess! I promise I'll speak slowly. Bye! Obviously, do I even need to say it? This boy has a way with words. His sarcasm was off the roof which I love. We do love a humorous guy. And I really love how he and Rory have the same sense of humor, which really counts for something. So for sense of humor, obviously Jess gets 10% perfecto. And you will- Give the painful Ernest Hemingway another chance. Yes, I promise. You know, Ernest only has lovely things to say about you. Jess and Rory are like two souls intertwined in one. They obviously get each other, he believed in her, she believed in him. They're pretty much harmonious with one another. They share the same interests, intelligence, sense of humor. It's like meeting someone for the first time and you automatically clicked. It's just that the vibes are the same, the energy is the same. Basically, a soulmate is what I'm trying to say. At first, Rory was too good for Jess, and now Jess is too good for Rory. They are the definition of right person, wrong time. They're just not in the same timeline. It's like two souls that are bound to meet together and have this ridiculously amazing connection just for destiny to ruin it. And during the year in the life, Jess definitely still loves Rory. And also, it is plain obvious that the father of Rory's child was Logan. And I read one theory that suggested that Rory will have the same fate as her mother with Logan embodying Christopher and just becoming Luke. He will act as a father to Rory's child and maybe probably 30 years from now, then Jess and Rory will have their moment. And as I said before, I'll try not to be biased with Jess, but you can't deny that they have great chemistry and really great connection, which we can all agree that it only happens a few times in our lives, but yeah, this is fiction and this is real life. So anyways, I'll shut up now and Jess gets 30% for compatibility. Another perfect oh, number. That's my room. Okay, put my number. Logan has never been a commitment type of guy. Flings, sure, but a serious real relationship, he has never done that. And he says so himself before dating Rory, which is an ultimately good sign of an open communication. He didn't try to make a move on Rory because he valued his stance and feelings as well as Rory's. But that's the thing, the beginning of their relationship was full of scheming and jealousies. Rory was often left hanging and wondering and if she didn't confront Logan about this, then it would all just be a huge blank of mystery. But Logan eventually grew to have a knack of this whole relationship thing. He showered Rory with the most thoughtful gifts and gestures that he could think of. Um, he's definitely a sentimental guy, as depicted by his symbolic and at first weird rocket gift to Rory. He seems to have Rory's back and protection from all of the pressures that comes with his family name. But growing up privileged, he may unconsciously... Unconsciously... Treat people inferiorly? Like the scene when Jess paid a visit, he was so mean towards Jess, a good friend, former lover of Rory. 
Well, I get how he might be jealous, but what he said about Chess's book was so uncalled for. And also how he treated Marty. It is a huge red flag when your significant other treats your friends as if they're below him. If he could do that, then you might be unaware that he's doing that to you. So for attentiveness, Logan gets 17%. But taken off like that, I was overreacting. That's just stupid. So forgive me. Obviously, we can expect that Logan is much more mature in comparison to Jess and Dean. Their relationship started when they were in college, so he has matured out of that high schooler's mind. But since he is still new with his whole relationship thing, there was a whole lot of miscommunications. If Rory and Logan would get into fights, he would fix things by giving Rory presents. Well, this worked for the first few times, but the whole incident with the Jess and the dropping out of Yale situation has resulted to Rory finding out that she and Logan have broken up through his sister. But what I don't like about their relationship is that they didn't talk about the issues and problems surrounding their breakup. I'm gonna dive into that in the next area, but for maturity, I might as well give Logan 15%. You don't get to care about where I live anymore, Logan. You broke up with me through your sister. I didn't mean for that to happen. You're a coward. After the fight with the Jess thing and the dropping out of Yale, Rory thought that they were just on a break, but Logan perceived it as a breakup, to which he codes by sleeping with his older sister's friends. And Rory didn't know about that until his sister's friends mentioned it, and Logan kept trying to convince Rory that he wasn't really cheating because they had broken up. But eventually, Rory gave in and accepted Logan again, but sorry Logan, you get 8% in loyalty. Smooth! Shut up. I need to work the system. You totally left me hanging there. Oh, what can I do? You were working the system. In fact, you are working the system so well, I think the system needs a day off. It's pretty obvious that Logan has a good sense of humor. I mean, his and Rory's jokes were spot on, and they seem to understand each other's humors. So, no more elaborations of this part. He gets 10%. Rory, right now, I don't need to do anything but be right here with you. Well, are you sure? Aren't people going to be mad that you're not answering your phone? Well, then that's their problem. Logan is the privileged side of Rory's life, while Jess, on the other hand, is the side of how Rory was raised. Rory's grandparents were never really fond of her boyfriends until Logan. And yes, Logan can be a brat, and I don't want to say it, but I feel like he has something to do with Rory's transition or change. And even though it was all on Rory, but being surrounded with that kind of people and lifestyle made her more aware of her grandparents' side and how to use that to her advantage. Logan made sure that she could see that, and he never failed to remind her that she is one of them. Boat equally possesses the same level of intelligence and humor and as well interest with the Yale Daily News, even though it may come off as toxic and lose morals. And also, I heard this information from somewhere that Tristan was supposed to be Logan. And, and if it were to happen, it would be absolutely a no-brainer for me. Like, I would choose Tristan all the way, but that didn't happen. So back to Logan. We can say that Logan fits better with Yale Rory, the Rory that we now know in the year in the life, the worldly and exposed Rory. So Logan gets 28%. A few moments later. I actually haven't calculated the ratings, so I have no idea who's the perfect boyfriend. So it will come as a shock to me as it will be with you. <gasps> oh my gosh. Okay, okay. I now got Dean's score and Jess's score. And I'm so scared because I know it's going to be a tiebreaker, either Jess or Logan. So... <laughs> Okay, so I now have the name of the perfect boyfriend on my iPad. So, drum roll, please. Yay! No, just kidding. Okay, anyways, the winner is... Jess Maria! Okay, so don't blame me with the result. Blame the person touch system, though it was based on my rating. But... <laughs> Okay, I'm kind of glad that it was Jess who won. I know for a fact that they're really compatible. It's either going to be Jess or Logan. Either way, I'm good with whoever. But I feel like Jess is going to be a good influence on the Rory we now know. Who's going to influence her and teach her good morals. So yeah, I'm perfectly contented with the outcome and the results. So.
Anyways, that's it for our video today. Thank you, thank you so much, guys, for watching. Please comment down below on who you think is a perfect boyfriend. And I'm sorry for the delay of this video. I'll try to be better next time. I'll try to be consistent from now on. And so, yeah, I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.